Hope you brought your number two pencil because this month we're going back to school. D and D minus. Hobgoblin robbers is just a few hours from the gates of Snedrick's old school, the Temple of Athiana. Fondord, or Alex as he was calling himself when you last saw him, wandered off into the woods searching for a quote, sweet magic sword or something you'll see, and <laughs> didn't come back. So you made your way to the school's famous stone gate and its equally famous unscalable wall. Well, unscalable if you're a gnome. It's actually just over 60 feet high, but that's okay because at the wall center in giant gold letters above a stone double door are the words, if you seek to enter here, answer the riddle that will soon appear. And as you approach the door, a swirling black mirror at gnome eye level shimmers and the following words appear in white smoke. What has four letters and sometimes has nine, but never has five? I got to tell y'all, if he had just asked what happened yesterday, I think he'd have got us. <laughs> <laughs> My brain hurts. <laughs> Four letters, sometimes nine, but never five. Is that what you said? What has four letters and sometimes has nine, but never has five? In other words, yes. And as Snedrick says the word yes, the gates of Athiana open. What? What? Yes has three letters. That's weird. What has four letters? Sometimes has nine. Never has five. Uh, yes. What literally has four letters? I'm not right, sure what's and, happening. And sometimes literally has nine and never literally has five. Oh. <laughs> so the answer to the riddle is yes. Okay. There we go. If you don't say yes at the end of a correct answer, it wouldn't like if we had just not like acknowledged that it was a correct statement, it would have stayed closed. Our own scalable walls are a little moody. They need to be reinforced <laughs> from time to time. I think it's unfair that nobody had to roll a die for that because that's not Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> well, hey, solving riddles is a fucking fantasy thing. That counts. You're going to hate the rest of a long time from now. So, yeah. Buckle the fuck in. <laughs> All right. The gates open, and the city of Athiana is quite the sight to behold. Every house, building, and store in this city is on wheels. Some are barely larger than an outhouse. Others look like mobile mansions. But at the center of the city, at the center of it all, is the Temple of Athiana, a towering castle also on wheels, that's more of a mobile block than just a building unto itself. And the other thing that immediately strikes you about this city is that everywhere are gnomes. I mean, yes, there is the occasional human, dwarf, even an elf or two, but this city is packed as far as your eye can see with gnomes and the businesses that cater to them. I don't understand why you feel the need to point that out like it's weird. I don't understand. <laughs> you, just, you never say it's all a bunch of white people. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have made it very clear that it's a bunch of white people many times, especially before I do their voices. <laughs> Some of my best friends are gnomes. Just I just want to say that. <laughs> There are fried kitten stands, snogs bane lounges, and bars with signs out front that say, no hip-hop, no saggy pants, which is weird because hip-hop and saggy pants don't exist in this universe. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think you're trying to like make a, make a nasty statement about us by saying that we make nasty statements, and then <laughs> I'm in a position where I can't make a nasty statement about you without proving you right. That's not fair. <laughs> you guys think those bars are racist? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> As you make your way through the crowds of the city, it isn't long, for your way is blocked by a crowd. They formed a loose circle, and at its center are two gnomes beating the shit out of each other. Ooh. All right, my guess is going to be that this is related to who was the better captain on Star Trek. Y'all don't make an opinion <laughs> unless you feel strongly about it. 
So when you say that, a gnome that's sort of near you turns to them and goes, nah, man, they're fighting it out because can you believe that stupid motherfucker on the left thinks that the hermetic principle of gold conversion has been replaced by the new runic work of Kylo Mythosis? I mean, read a book, am I right? And as he says that, the other gnome in the fight delivers a killer roundhouse that knocks him out cold. <laughs> Classic. The, the one, the, the pro-hermetic The gold. Fed is a Ponzi scheme, hermetic gold. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> exactly. And the crowd disperses. So where do you go? What do you want to do? Let's go to the bar. Uh, uh, wait, wait, where's the school? Who fucking cares, nerd? Let's go to the bar. So I figure there's a lot of snogs bane places on the way to both the bar and the school. Sure. I mean, wh when in Rome, I'm going to do what, what Snedrick wants to do. When in Gnome. Hey. That's pretty good. <laughs> <classic. laughs> yeah. Gnome. All right. So I'm going to direct them towards uh, my favorite, uh, not my favorite Snogsbane shop, but like my favorite area where there's a lot of Snogsbane shops. All right, yeah. So it's it's just outside of the university. A lot of people consider what are the it sort odds of, like, of that? <laughs> yeah, the, the school area. A lot of a lot of the students who go there <laughs> sort of hang out here. Coffee shops and bookshops <laughs> and you know fancy tapas restaurants and of course your favorite snogsbane places and bars are also here. All right, I feel like we should just keep getting high and drunk until you something know, happens. God moves us <laughs> in a certain direction or so. Yep. Well, wait, where, where did they, they said it was in the school? Uh, God, do you remember yeah. did we, you went over this in, I literally just listened to the episode also, and it is, <laughs> has been erased from my memory. I don't wait, know Wait, how did you listen to the episode? The prep episode. Oh, okay. But there was an episode after that, wasn't there? There was. Yeah, there yeah. was, yeah. but I mean, yeah, it's not out yet. Yeah, what the fuck happened in that episode? We <laughs> fought some trolls. Fontord, we Carl. fought some trolls and literally no plot at all. It was yeah. just on the way. You stole a blonde wig. Do you remember that? And I gave it to Carl, absolutely. But wasn't there some sort of uh, story stuff before we got into the battle or no? No. No. Okay, cool. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, why did we come to this town again? What are we doing? <laughs> That's the snogs bane kicking in right there, man. <laughs> Are my hands oh, normal? Oh, this is so weird. <laughs> Where do you guys put them? Can y'all hear my heart beating? <laughs> I'm not an asshole. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that we, as a society, really rely on magic? But like, what if we didn't have magic? What? Do you think we would have? Do you think we would have? Uh, Invented something else. That Mind like blown. Did no, you, hear that? you know what I think we would have done is I think we would have thought there was magic anyway, even when there wasn't. We would have pretended like oh. there was, and then there would have been like two percent of the population that rejected it and made a bunch of podcasts, and everybody would call them assholes. <laughs> That'd be my guess. <sighs> that sounds plausible. You guys listen to podcasts. <laughs> Listen to fantasy podcasts. Fantasy podcasts. <laughs> it's fantasy just the spell you cast on your ear. <laughs> Three or four guys just shooting the shit on it. <laughs> so yes, uh, good question though, Bridget. So a quick reminder, you are here in search of the Locket of Fabrication, which is in the possession of the High Priestess of the Temple of Athiana, which is the school at the center of town. You went to a religious school. Well, I got kicked out of a religious school, yeah, for performing <laughs> ah, an abortion. Fair, fair. Well, I mean, I don't know about performing, but trying to perform an abortion. Oh, yeah. Uh, is is Athena one of those who is not very into the, the whole uh, all lives matter kind of thing? <laughs> so, interestingly enough, the, the uh, Temple of Athena does not worship any gods. It's just a school, um, and it's what's known as a temple of knowledge. Athiana is the name of the city. It's not a reference to the Greek god Ooh, Athena. Okay. All right, I all knew right. that because I went there. Ah, well, <laughs> I know the fight song, the too. <laughs> Everything we just said. Whoa, Smog's Bay, man. <laughs> Crazy. I used to know all that. I used to know the mascot and everything. All right, y'all, you guys want to go get that locket? Aye, let's do this shape. That sounds, you guys sound very enthusiastic. 
I'm gonna hang out here. I uh, just, just, just very high, man. <laughs> so, luckily for you, the school of Athena is the only building in the city built to accommodate anyone larger than a gnome, and it is impressive. It stretches skyward, covered in magical runes, and. Constantly, students pour in and out of its many entrances, talking excitedly among themselves or nose deep in their schoolwork. Almost nobody takes notice of you till you reach the front door, which, luckily, is larger than gnome-sized and is flanked on either side by two of the school's gnomish guards. I say, I say, welcome to the Temple of Athiana, strangers. All who seek to learn are welcome here, etc. Please state your business. Uh, I'm an alum. I was just, uh, you were in town. I was going to show them my old digs. Oh, y'all are interested in a tour. Well, you can arrange that through visitor relations office. I already have. They told me to come here. All right. Let me uh, escort you to the visitor relations office and they'll begin your tour. Do you have an appointment? I don't know if you'd call it an appointment so much as a standing agreement that I'm important enough. All right, then. I'll take you to the high prefect, and I'm sure he'll treat you with the respect you deserve. And so the guards open the door and lead you through the twisting halls of the school to a small gnome-sized office door labeled Visitor Relations. All right, before we before we go in, I'm going to turn to these guys, and I'm going to whisper, keep in mind they kicked me out for being a fucker. Oh. <laughs> Noted. Why... What would what would we do with that information? I mean, I just want you to know this is all going to go to shit as soon as he opens this door. <laughs> oh, oh, I okay, okay. Uh, so while you're whispering this, the guard knocks and says, uh, "Hi, prefect. There's some folks here. Say they have a." I'm gonna cast a uh, fog. You're casting <laughs> fog. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah, you are. Gonna Fuck yeah, you're going to cast fog. <laughs> are we just going to enter in a cloud of fog, or is that a magic spell on the prefect guy? Uh, No, that's a magic spell that I'm going to... Oh, gosh. You know what? I'm going to cast it at... I should probably keep, save my second level spell slots. I'm going to cast it at first level. So <laughs> a 20-foot radius sphere of fog centered on a point within range. I'm going to say the guard, I guess? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, obviously um, the door. The sphere spreads around corners and its area is heavily obscured. It lasts for the duration, which is a concentration or up to one hour, or until a wind of moderate or greater speed disperses it. Can I blow on the fog? Yeah, at 10 miles per hour. So, <laughs> you know, if you can blow at 10 can miles you per hour. 10 miles an hour? Yes. <laughs> Just a high Dave the Dragonborn trying to blow the fog away. But yeah, the, the hallway fills with fog. You hear the, the guards sort of stop for a moment. He was about to knock on the door and he says, oh, oh I, I'm sorry. This must be one of the students. Just give me a moment. And you hear a rush of wind and the oh, fog God. is Shit. pushed Guys, away. Guys, why didn't we get out of there? <laughs> well, you had and he says, uh, my apologies for that. This is, after all, a magic school. But don't worry, I can handle anything the students get up to. Great. So <laughs> glad about that. Sweet spell, <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I can't imagine why a student would decide to, like, you know, blast a spell slot and then just have it uh, arrive at yeah, nothing. Yeah, neither can I. That's ridiculous. Why would they do that? <laughs> Who, who'd be up for a long rest right now? Anybody need a long rest? <laughs> Dave's good. So, while you guys are discussing that you didn't do that, the guard knowingly <laughs> knocks on the door of the office and says, uh, hi, prefect. There's some folks here to see you. Uh, they say they are very important. I'm gonna yell, cheese it, and we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna run. <laughs> Towards one of the many places I know of where we could, you know, where you could dip out and smoke some snogs bane while you're supposed to be in class. Okay, uh, so you're running out of the building you just ran into. Well, you know, out into the campus area. All right, so you you take off into the campus area. The guard looks very confused. He's like, "But don't you want your tour?" He calls after you, but you're. You're he's, gone. You make cool. it out into the campus. He never tried to perform an abortion here. That's not why this is happening. Sorry. <laughs> And now you're out in the campus. All right. So now we got to duck out somewhere where we can like, um, where we can like let the shit blow over. <clears throat> like I said, I know a lot of these places, I'm sure. Right. 
Yeah, absolutely. There's like a little um, path that leads through some like deep forest to a quiet riverbed that you could take people. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do. <laughs> great. You're you're at the quiet riverbed. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> what? what? So did we? <laughs> It, she was who? Who was it? Who had the locket? The temple. It was in the temple. I thought the high we were priestess. Literally just the right high, there. The high priestess. Yeah. No, we were with the high prefect. That's not the high priestess. That's a whole different thing. Um. So now we got to get to the main temple area. You see, under different pretenses. Seem, seemed like there was like a whole like progression that we were supposed. To, it's yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> uh, we All didn't right. really have an appointment though. That's fair. All I'm saying is in the past, when we've walked into offices without a plan, saying we were yeah. supposed to be there when we weren't, it ain't gone well for us. Right now, we're yeah. by a nice <laughs> bubbling this, creek. This is a good point. You know, Claw, I would never expect you to be the one who said, yeah, first on that one. <laughs> well, I, I do have Greg's clipboard if we would like to use it. <laughs> oh, God. All right, but but I know where, like, the high priestess would be, right? I, I mean, Yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm, I'm you know like, where her office is. Yeah, Where's that? I, yeah. Yeah. Are we going to be able to enter with fog or are we just walking right in regular? <laughs> all right. What I'm thinking is, is we need to seduce her. All right. And I ain't going to be able to do that because I'm just a regular ass gnome. She sees them all the time. She, what she doesn't see is sexy bird folk with fast hands. Hmm. I think Dave is jealous. <laughs> I think we need Claw to seduce the high priestess and then we can sneak in and get the locket while they're fucking. Yeah. I could do that, or I could do pass without a trace, and Dave could seduce her. Oh, right. You're the thief. That would make way will, more will fucking you, sense, um, wouldn't will it? Will you describe yeah. the high priestess gnome really quick? <laughs> I, she's, she's hot for a gnome. Like on a one to ten scale. Oh, my God. You're so shallow. <laughs> I, she's a gnome seven, man. Come on. Now, don't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter here. What I'm saying is, is that, yeah, that makes sense because we could do the thief thing. Yeah, I like that. I like that. So, Claude, you're going to have to seduce her then. Okay. I mean, not Claw. I mean, Dave. Oh, okay. Ha. Huh. Yep. Me. <laughs> <laughs> it was a competition. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I love how you're just assuming she's going to be into it. <laughs> like, well, she, was she in... doesn't have, doesn't care which one. I feel like she was going to, gonna, I, honestly, oh, like see. the fast, I thought the fast hands thing was going to work out real good and the feathers, I, you I know? would describe my charisma as like a plus six if you were going to do it as like a plus three. I, I would like to put odds on that. All right. I am going to put, how much, where's my fucking, how much money? Money do I have? Are we about to gamble on whether or not I, I fuck this gnome? I, this I, is problematic <laughs> for you to suggest. Well, I'm saying that we that neither none of us really matters. Like none of our opinion matters. It's only hers. She's the one who's going to actually have mm -hmm. to do it. Backpedaling out of the bet. Okay, so really quickly, I have a few props you may want to use. No, I bet. Oh you slap shit! I, oh, I bet you a slap in the face. Dave, this week's episode of D&D &D Minus is brought to you by AdamandEve.com. <laughs> so for your so you couple know, of props you might want to use. Yeah, I have <laughs> I have blue robes, probably not useful. Do you have, have any hair? I do have a lock of magic hair. Great. And I, have a I don't have a blonde wig. That's gone. But I do have a flag from the god Valkyr that says, are you mad at me? So you could use that. And right. I have Greg's, and Greg's clipboard. How do you suggest? Ooh, the clipboard. That's interesting. All right. All right. <laughs> so that's good for like a spanking type thing. And the flag is good if, in case she gets mad at you. It can be charming. <laughs> you could use it like the, um, you know, the boom box, like a fantasy boom box outside of her fantasy <laughs> house. I guess they just have houses. Wait, what if we like did a, a say anything and then I snuck in while she was confused? <laughs> <laughs> Make up your mind, damn it. <laughs> I'm actually all for that. We have Dave do a say anything from outside the window. I think that Dave should try to seduce her, but then Klaus should have to do the voice all Cyrano de Bergerac style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I'll do pass without a trace. And then, and then you, well, right, and then me and um, and well, I, I was I was thinking at that point that me and Bridget would would go in and steal the lockup. Just I feel like that would be Bridget, more slapsticky, but Bridget's sure. a Bridget's a good singer. You could do the Peter Gabriel thing, Bridget. Am I a good you got singer? that in your eyes. You think you could pull I, that off? I don't know. Have you ever heard Bridget sing anything? No, I think we should. Let's test it. So you want to give us a quick verse of that or 
Do you feel like you can do it? Am I seeing? Oh, there was a. Did you have Peter a Gabriel? Request? You're in your eyes. Oh no, I don't know that one, but I do know this. Here, here, let's go. I placed my hand upon her toe. Yo ho, yo ho. <laughs> I placed my hand works for upon me. her toe. Yo ho. I mean, I want to fuck now. So, <laughs> guys, I don't want to interrupt. What the fuck is happening in my Dungeons and Dragons game? Just so I know. <laughs> Because right now, the mental picture I have, and I just want to make sure before I take my own life, is that <laughs> someone's holding up a flag that says, are you mad at me in the quad of a magic school? Dave's holding up that flag while Bridget sings that song, the song that we just heard, while Claw tries to sneak into the school itself? Yep. Did Claw start no, doing that? Not, we're just doing yet. acapella in the quad. That's a normal no, thing. No, we're just, yeah. And we're not even in the quiet. We're over by a quiet brook. So nothing's <laughs> happening right now. And just to be clear, music for is me, happening. as far as I'm concerned, I have to do nothing. We're stressed. <laughs> you are in an isolated <laughs> location that has nothing to do with anything. Singing a song. <laughs> That's right. Okay, we don't good. always, hey, don't I'm always fucking, need I you. Chill out. I'll have some water. <laughs> we don't always need you. No, no. Yeah. We're discussing how the seduction is going to play out. I think we've. I think we've got a pretty good plan. <laughs> Well, so Wait. should I cast Pass Without a Trace on Snedrick since he will probably be the easiest to get through a window and know where everything is? I feel like we're using deception magic for like this, you know, this sex thing. I don't like any of the plan. <laughs> Question. Did we just run away from the literal building that she is in? Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to have to go back in that, obviously. Yeah, I don't know how we're going to do that. We just well, there's probably, away. but there's probably more than one entrance. Yeah, definitely. Maybe somebody can cast fog, or did that already happen? <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought that was a great idea. I thought we could have could sneak past her or whatever. But well, you know. we can. I have a bunch of darkness spells, right? But we don't know where the locket it's is a yet. Magic right. school. The idea is to seduce her and get her to give up the location of the locket. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm all for that. Okay, so you're you're doing the song. What lines should I use? Do you guys figure I should we have like a good opener? I is. feel like you should go in there with Carl, right? You should go in with Carl and Ooh, say, "Hey, there's yeah. I found this magic puppy and he seems lost and Ooh, afraid." and he's and got I the figured, blonde wig. We right, can get some right, weird yeah. stuff with that. I like yeah. it. Oh my god. Okay, so, so are you going to a different entrance? <laughs> I, I feel like we will. Yeah. Okay, you go to a different entrance. There are. Obviously, guards there, but they don't recognize you. They're not the guards from before because it would be crazy if there was one entrance guarded and not another entrance guarded. Obviously. That would be crazy. <laughs> that would Agree. be crazy. So you walk up and the guard says, I say, I say, welcome to the Temple of Athena, strangers. All who seek to learn are welcome here. State your business. Dave. <laughs> Hello, sir. Do you, do you have guard here? A lot stupid. I Do we just... Wanted um, to, I like your hat. In your eyes. What? <laughs> you like I the song my that this, my, my bird eyes. friend? And, well, <laughs> did you like the two different songs that my bird friend and my, uh, <laughs> my dwarf friend are singing? Do you like those, sir? <laughs> I, I got to tell you, I love both those songs. Sure. I Consider me one over. How can I help you? <laughs> All right. Well, maybe you'd like to uh, go grab a drink with me at that bar right across the street I, there. I think that we would actually... <laughs> well, stranger who just walked up to my castle yes. while I'm in the middle of work, yeah. much as I would love to abandon my duties as the gods of this educational as charm, system... You, 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 you said you are very charmed. So, oh, I'm, uh, yeah. Believe me, I am charmed. And much as I would love to abandon my mm. duties as a god to this building and raw dog you in the back room of the nearest establishment... Well, I don't think I said anything about who would be the top and the bottom. It feels like you've already assigned... Well, go ahead. Sorry, raw, go ahead. Raw dog. Be raw dogged. I'm into all of it. Oh, Unfortunately... Oh, okay, good, 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 good. Go ahead. I'm not quite quit my job on the spot levels into it. Okay. Mm. <laughs> So I get off at six if you'd like to fuck them. We are Great. here to see the high mm. priestess. <laughs> oh, you're here to see the high priestess. What a sane way to okay. approach we the building. We could have just avoided that whole song then, person. but here we go. Go ahead. 
Oh no, you and I are fucking. <laughs> okay, all right, well that's locked in then. Six o'clock, we'll come back. But high priestess, that's locked please. In. Uh, I want to roll for Heath fucking the guard. <laughs> I'm gonna. T- that's a strength check, and Heath has to make it. I'm gonna take her to see the high priestess because this is a school, and you're allowed to see people in it. It's not a fucking high security prison or anything like that. Oh, but you yeah, stay right here, sense. Dragonborn, because I'm gonna fill you up like a birthday balloon. Okay, well I'd like to roll for bottom. <laughs> That's an agility check. <laughs> All right. I will be rolling. A... Well, you gotta roll when you fuck the guard. You can't roll yeah, here now, now to be a bottom. I just rolled an 18 to be clear. That's counts he's, for later. He, he's at work. <laughs> <laughs> he will roll you for who's on bottom later. Okay. So he turns back to Bridget and he says, Yes, you're here to see the high priestess. Well, actually, we are all here to see the high priestess. Oh, even the one I'm going to fuck? Mm-hmm. Well, some mm-hmm. of us are here to fuck the guards and see the high priestess. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be an either or kind of thing. Multitasking, I appreciate it. Well, yeah, I could take you to her office. Do you have an appointment? We don't, but we would very much like to see her. Oh, well, I'll see if she's free. Follow me. And the guards lead you through the twisting halls of the school once again. They lead you very close to the entrance you went in and right by the high prefect's office. But luckily for you, the guards don't notice you and the high prefect, of course, never saw you. And they lead you to the high priestess's office. And they knock on the door and they say, uh, high priestess, high priestess, uh, there's some folks here interested to see you. Do you have a moment? And there's a pause and the door opens. But it's not opened by the high priestess. It's opened by a gnome about Snedrick's age, who opens his mouth to speak, but upon seeing Snedrick, closes it sharply and replaces his courteous smile with a sneer because, Snedrick, you are looking at a bitch Slutsky, named for patron Chastity Slutsky, <laughs> the gnome who snitched on you what? and got you kicked out of school. <gasps> his name's what? Oh, sorry. He, he hasn't said it in the game. Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> yeah, so I... But I can say it. I can say... A bitch. Ah, oh, shit. If it isn't Snedrick fucking Ferndangle. What are you doing here, man? You applying for a job as a shit shoveler? Because I don't think no, you're up to no, the challenge. I don't. I, I'm, I'm adventuring. I'm, I'm adventuring with, with exciting adventures. With, with, look at my diverse cast of adventurers that I came with. <laughs> yeah, I see your, what are they called? Diverse cast here. What are you doing here at the high priestess's office, man? She don't want to fucking see you. I, yeah, I, I, important adventuring and stuff that is Im- better than what you're doing. It, I went on to do important shit while well, you fucking give people shit at the high priestess office. What are you, a secretary? Ah, uh, no, see, I'm the high prefect here, uh, which means I'm second in command to the high priestess. So if you want to see the high priestess, I'm afraid you're going to need my permission. Uh, He does not want to see the high priestess. I want to see the high priestess. I don't know know why you're talking to him. He's second. That's first We don't even know this guy. He's first loser. He just follows us. I'm I'm fucking this guard later, by the way. The name's Bridget (laughs) Boulderstash. What's your name? And I'm going to tie, like, stand at my highest, like, three foot, whatever it is. Which Which is is taller than him, to be fair. Which is slightly taller than a gnome. Ma'am, my name is a beesh. A beesh, a slutsky. As if we, pr- as if it's gonna sound all right if we pronounce your, your first name right. Come on. What your name is? What a beesh, a b i t c h. The slutsky. Okay. It's a, it's gnomish. It's an old name. Mm-hmm. It's not though. My name it's is not. It's a, it, it, no. There is a gnomish name that's like that, but his mama spelled it wrong when he was born. <laughs> And it came out a bitch. And he tries he tries to pretend like it's like French or something. A beach, but it ain't. It's a variation on the spelling. <laughs> I am the prefect of the school and Miss Boulder Mash, is that what you called yourself? Boulder Stash. Do you see? Oh, you're the gonna stash? make fun of somebody else's name, a bitch. Come on now. <laughs> It's a beach, motherfucker. Like a- and I tell you what, you say that <laughs> wrong again, and he's about to point his finger at you when you notice something disturbing. The entire bustling school has gone silent. And you look up from the reddened face of a bitch Slutsky, and you see why. The double doors to the inner chamber of the headmistress's office are open. 
And in those doors stands the new headmistress, who, Snedrick, you know very well, because they are the other person responsible for you being expelled from school, specifically because of the favor you did her. But of course, when you knew her, she was Holly Crinkles, named for I love you level patron Holly Foley. Thank you, Holly. In the perfect Ooh, silence that comes over the school in her presence, she points her hammer of judgment at you and says, Holy shit, Snedrick Ferndangle, <laughs> it's about time you visited me. How the fuck are you? I'm doing great, Holly. How you been? Oh my gosh. And she slams a bitch out of the, I mean, slams a bitch <laughs> out of the way and throws her arms around you in a giant hug. Was, just for that. <laughs> <laughs> you set it up just so you can see that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, just popping in to thank you once again for listening to the show. Our next episode will be out Friday, March 5th. Uh, that's when you can expect the next episode of the show. But if you can't wait for that, why not support us over at patreon.com forward slash D and D minus all spelled out. You'll get access to two Dungeon Masters Corners where I tell you a little about my opinions on Dungeons and Dragons and a mini game that we played called The Worst and the Dimmest, which was a ton of fun to do. Not just that, but if you don't like this part where I jump in in the middle and remind you when the next show is and ask you to like us on iTunes or whatever those things are, uh, you can get rid of that by supporting us on Patreon. So whether it's for the extra stuff or if you want less of this, there's always a good reason to support. And speaking of which, if you're enjoying the show, maybe you can't afford to throw us a few bucks right now, but you want to help out, why not give us a rating on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you listen to the podcast? Because that stuff drives us up the charts, really does matter to more people finding out about the show. You can also tell your friends about the show, tweet about the show, send it to people, recommend it to people. That stuff always, always helps. All right, we will see you next month, March 5th. Until then, enjoy the rest of the show. While she's hugging you, she says, oh, don't mind a bitch. I'll show y'all around. What are you doing here? And a, a bitch who is, again, like pressed against the door with her one arm is like, please, mistress, it's pronounced a bitch. Uh, high priestess, it's a bitch. And she's like, sure it is a bitch. Oh, gosh. How you doing, Snedrick? Oh, my gosh. It's so amazing to see you. I, you have no idea how many times I wanted to send you a letter or a message, but after you left school, I didn't know where you went. What are you doing here? What brings you to town? Or did you just come to congratulate me on the new gig? And she holds her arms out so you can admire her in her robes of the high priestess. Well, that was mostly it. Yeah, that's, I mean, we was adventuring nearby because I'm an adventurer now. I adventure. I don't know if you uh, know or not, but I'm in with, uh, what, what's the fucking guy's name that, that hired us? In the Blade first? Vigil. Blade Vigil, yeah. I don't know if you know this or not, but I'm in with Blade Vigil these days. So I was out adventuring nearby and I heard, you know, and I said, well, I should go by there and congratulate her and, and we should have a, a drink and smoke a bowl together. Hell yeah, we should. Blade Vigil. I want to hear all about how you met him. God damn. I should introduce you to my friends here. This is Dave. He's Dragonborn. Hello. I can see that. Hello, Hello Dave. I like your, uh, your, that's a great robe for your body type. I don't know why I'm volunteering this, Dave, because you seem nice. I would never fuck you. But really, just that's the first thing. <laughs> never. I came to your head just now. Dave as hard as I can right now. <laughs> do you, Surprise round. Oh, Roll yeah, 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 yeah. okay, Miss mi Miss Miss Headmistress, <laughs> do you like magic by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> How about blunder busts? <laughs> and now this over magic? here. This uh, is claw. Second. Wait, 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 oh, wait, 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 wait. Sorry. Wait. That is a nat 20, everybody. Nat 20. No. Slap Dave. Right. The moment she says, I would never fuck you, you slap Dave right across the face <laughs> and do zero <laughs> points of damage. Uh, it's, it's nat 20. We just I have do this, actually, we wait, have wait, wait, this wait, game wait. with slabbing. It's, <laughs> it's fun. It's so fun. <laughs> And then, and then over here, this is my friend Claw. He's got feathers and very fast hands. I'm also oh. gonna slap Dave. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, uh, this is classic. Now, now that I've been slapped, would you change? 
What would You're you not going to believe this, but I promise it's true. Natural 20. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Get the f- you guys are slapping me so goddamn good. Wow, this is ridiculous. I've never been slapped twice in a row so perfectly. Ha! Ah. Ah. Good to meet you, madam. You got an odd group with you, Dave. Yeah. And yep. who's this young lady? Is this your lady friend, Snedrick? Oh, well, she's my friend and she's a lady, but she's a, uh, you know, just, ju- just that. This is Bridget Boulder's the Bridget Boulderstash. Miss Boulderstash, nice Ooh, to I meet you. Thank you. I, I'm going to do a big bow. Oh, well, I am honored. Any friends of Snedrick's are friends of mine. Well, shit, can I give y'all a tour? You want to see the school? You want to see what I've done with the place? Yeah, you bet. Nice. Yeah. Absolutely. Follow me. And she takes off into the hall and beckons to you to follow her. And she sort of talks to you as she walks. She says, I got to tell you, Snedrick, this is all thanks to you, sugar. You see, like 95% of women surveyed, I don't regret my abortion and having it opened up educational and economic opportunities that wouldn't have otherwise been afforded to me. So, you know, now I'm in charge of the fucking school. Yeah, that's kind of the argument that I was making when they were kicking me out. But, you know, they didn't they didn't really let I didn't I didn't word it as well. I mostly just said, fuck you a lot. But I meant the same thing. Mo- I remember that. I that's remember great that. for you're a confident woman. Stupid. What? <laughs> no, no. He's right. When Snedrick and I were here, this was a totally different place. It was all gloomy and glum with tradition and rules. As soon as I got in charge, I banished tuition and I ended the ban on non gnome students. Hell, this is all paid for itself. Education is one of the best investments you can make in a population. Not a lot of people know that. Now we're supported by the city and our student body is more diverse than ever before. Here we are. All right. Uh, first thing I want to show you the first stop on our tour. Gnome, gentlemen, Araquokra, lady, may I present dragon. this week in mythology. I'm a dragon. <laughs> and through the glass, you see a laboratory of sorts where gnomes cast spells at plate mail, chain mail, and helmets while on tables, cauldrons of potions bubble and brew. Still more are pouring those potions over armor that's waiting to be tested. <gasps> she leads you inside the lab to the far end of the room where a vat of bubbling purple liquid sits. She carefully dunks a vial into it and takes a dainty sip. Y'all want to see the future of magical production? Hey. Bird boy. Yep. You seem like you got a good punch. Take a swing at me with that quarter staff. Okay. I'm assuming I roll, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 16. You swing your quarter staff directly at the high priestess's head and are horrified to hear a crack, but then it breaks over her head and she is entirely unfazed. She turns to you and says, liquid magic armor, y'all. Once I work the kinks out of this bad boy, you'll be able to walk through the underdark naked as the day you were born. But don't get any ideas about sneaking some home with you. Stuff isn't ready yet. Right now, only lasts for about 10 seconds. You drink too much and there's side effects. <laughs> Last week, I tested some on a bitch when he wasn't looking. And he was protected from oxygen for almost a minute and a half. It was funny. Oh, 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 wow. It was really oh, funny. a beesh. A beesh. I got it. I got it. Cool. I mean, I guess that's how he pronounces it. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's how you would pronounce it Very if you were a bitch. Culturally <laughs> sensitive. <laughs> you get it? And then I, said, yeah, well, I, I do. I did that. And as she does yeah. that, she pulls a, a locket out from inside her robes and she clicks the top of it and your quarterstaff repairs itself and she hands it back to you. Good. That was my next question. <laughs> Is my only weapon broken? (laughs) (laughs) She hands it back to you and says, sorry about that. Just needed to use it as an example. Y'all want to see some more shit? Yeah, Yeah. definitely. Yes. So she walks you down more hallways. You pass full classrooms, workshops, a library, maybe two, until she leads you to a courtyard in the center of which stands an empty wooden gateway. She turns to you and says, this is a personal project of mine. You got to be careful with illusion magic, of course, but it can be fun to escape. Come on. And she steps through the gateway and vanishes. Ooh, I'm going to follow her. Is there a non-awkward way to say, would you like to see my wand? I feel like there's not, (laughs) right? We should just step through. We'll step through. (laughs) You step through the gate and you emerge in, well, there's no other word for it, paradise. It's warm and tropical here, but 
with a cool breeze blowing, the sand beneath your feet is impossibly soft. And the only thing you can hear beyond the waves all around you is a soft lute circling around a pleasant island tune. There are people here, too, mostly animal folk. They're fishing and frolicking. One walks up to you, Claw, and hands you a detailed blueprint of a wooden bench and says, <laughs> and when he does that, Holly says, thank you. No, no, thank you. No, thank you. And sort of shoes him away. And she says, sorry, that happens when you make something with fabrication magic is sort of fabrication begets fabrication. I see. Bridget, make an, <laughs> uh, make an insight check for uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, insight. Right. I have plus five for that. Just um, really quick question. Was that a DIY recipe? Yes, it was. Got it. <laughs> cool. I'm there. <laughs> that is uh, 10. Yeah, you're not sure how you know, but you would spend hours here. <laughs> hours and hours and hours Something and like hours. 495. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> I don't get the references that are being made by everybody right now. Uh, that's because you're unmarried, you see. You're the unmarried. <laughs> she steps back through the gate and says, come on, y'all, I saved the best for last. Oh, but I want to stay here for. I kind of do too, actually. Yeah. I uh, do. You have a piano. The next one could be Mario Odyssey. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they just wait. Or Hades. I feel like I yeah. just I just got the capability of going swimming, and I really want to try it out. Are we talking about like Nintendo or something? I have yes, no idea. <laughs> I'm a dragon. <laughs> Animal Crossing. <laughs> uh, so she leads you back across the courtyard and inside the castle to another lab. This one has a steel door. And in the center of the sizable room sits a metal box the size of a, mm, I would say, a walk-in closet uh, covered in what you, Snedrick, and you, Dave, recognize as runes of cold. She turns to you and says, this is my pride and joy. Self-reinforcing, inward-pointing runes of cold that will keep food fresh for days or even weeks. It's going to change how people live, where people can live, and it's going to put a major dent in starvation. I call it the refrigerator. Nice. <laughs> It'll nice. never catch on. No. Do, uh, do, <laughs> is, that, is that also a reference to the weird thing Animal we're in? Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> I th I don't listen to him. I think your idea is pretty cool. And she <laughs> cool <laughs> that. She loves. That. I get that. That's that's just a general <laughs> reference to the word. Yeah, she laughs really, really hard at that joke. I knew that she was. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny too, Holly. I thought that was funny too. <laughs> I'm gonna slap Dave again. We're right, very similar sense of humor wise. We have. I laughed at the same thing. <laughs> uh, Great. Now sexual <laughs> politics are at play. <laughs> Well, wow. <laughs> Thanks so much for stopping by. I mean, I guess that's it. Is there anything else I can show y'all? Anything I can do while y'all are in town? Yeah, there's one other thing I wanted to talk to you about, but I don't know if it's something we can talk about, you know, out in the open where there's folks wandering around and, and whatnot. Oh, just you and me or you and your friends? Well, let's go with me and my friends just because, uh, you know, I don't want to make uh, Dave feel too bad about himself here. <laughs> what? No worries. And she, I'm not, a wand. Yeah, this is normal. Go ahead. <laughs> a wand pops out of her sleeve. She spins it expertly in her hand, and a veil of silence falls around you. And she says, There. Now we're the only ones who can hear us talk. What'd you need, sugar? All right. So I'm going to look to Bridget sort of, sort of for validation, give her that, um, you know, should I? And I'm going to like kind of look at where I'm carrying my the wand of seven parts. I'm going to give a big thumbs up next to Bridget's face. So long as it's not up your butt, I think you can whip it out at this point. Do okay. it. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure it's cool. Like, well, you know, I was telling you we were hanging with Blade Vigil these days. Well, he's given us a very important quest. I feel like maybe you would recognize this. And I'm going to pull out the wand of seven parts. And she does. She Her face goes from happy and joyful to see you to very serious. And she goes, oh, that's that's the wand of seven parts. Snedrick, are, are you reforming the wand? Unfortunately, yes, we are. 
which means you'll need this. And she pulls the locket out that she used to repair your staff earlier and says, uh, the locket of fabrication. Well, <laughs> obviously, I'm, I'm happy to give it to y'all. Uh, but if you're going to take it off school grounds, I, I, I do need to do it officially. Um, you need to make a formal request tonight at high council. But, but don't worry. <laughs> I got an in with the head of the school and I have a hunch she'll say yes. It's just, it's just paperwork, you know, just needs to be done. But yeah, you, you can have it. All right. All right. Well, you know, I'm, I, 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 I didn't want to make this too transactional. I'm really glad we got to see your Animal Crossing joke and everything. It would have been a shame if we had to <laughs> miss that. Thank you. Right? I liked it. Oh, we have so much to catch up on. But I, I tell you what, there's time for all that later. I tell you what, I'll get a bitch, have him show you to your rooms. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll set something nice up for you. And then I'll see y'all at High Council tonight. Does that sound good? Sounds great. Thank you so much, Holly. And she spins her wand again. The cone disappears and she yells, Yo, bitch! <laughs> bitch! <laughs> and there's a pause and a bee sort of slumps into view and she goes, Will you show them to the super high-end guest suites? Also, try not to get your fucking snot all over them, you whiny-ass bitch. And sort of a defeated a bitch once again sort of says, It's, it's a beach mistress. And then leads you down the hall to your lodgings in stony silence. Uh, does anybody have the time in the fantasy world? Because if it's 6 p.m., Dave has a date. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, does anybody know what time it is? That's a good point. <laughs> oh, it's 6.35. Uh, I send a text. <laughs> you can still make it. Hey, Claw, I think he's going to need that flag from you now. Yeah. <laughs> We cut over to a heartbroken guard. He's standing there with a handful of daisies, looking at his <laughs> timepiece, sadly shaking his head. I say, I say, Nathaniel, you've been fooled again. <laughs> fooled again, Nathaniel. And he walks off into the distance. Aw, Dave, you're we not going to run it. after him? Get me to the church on time. We could do this. Gabe, you can run. Dave, you can run to be there, but he I will not be there. when I you. would like to run to be there. <laughs> All right. He's not there. He's gone. Damn it. It's too late. <laughs> you sound very disappointed. <laughs> Some things just can't be undone. Really wanted to fuck that guy. So you have no idea how they got it ready so quickly, but your rooms are perfect. Claw, your room has a large hair nest in its center. Bridget, there's an ice water <laughs> bath and a barrel of ale from Sea Crash. Oh, yes. Dave, you have a race car bed with flames <laughs> on the side. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and a little sidecar bed for Carl so right fast. next to it. <laughs> uh, and Snedrick, your room is the best of all because someone has packed, and I mean packed, a bong with some of the dopest snogsbane you've ever had and left it at your bedside table for you. All right, well, then I think I'm going to cast a little fog of my own. <laughs> <laughs> so the room is totally normal. It just has a badass. Bong. Is there... Any access to that that wonderful crossing of the animals location? <laughs> like maybe maybe a portable like book or a disc <laughs> or a tablet that I could I could go back there and just, <laughs> you could... just rearrange the furniture. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk to the high priestess about it later. Okay. She'll let you in. So that night, uh, so take a long rest, all of you. <laughs> I have a quick question. Did you say hair nest? Yeah, it's a hair nest. Hair. Yeah. Hair. You're human hair. Human hair. No. No, it's just hair. You don't know if it's human or gnome or what. It's okay. collected from many different <laughs> sources. I would say stolen. I would definitely say stolen. <laughs> That's fair. Oh my God, you really are a bird. Wow. So <laughs> that night, a bell rings and the entire school, heck, it feels like the entire city pours into the school's great hall. Uh, there are bleachers around the walls of the hall. They reach high up the walls of the castle and fried kitten and popcorn vendors walk up and down handing out complimentary treats. Finally, as you settle into your seats, the bell stops and the room goes silent. Holly, or as she's known to Dave, the high priestess, conducts business like a pro. Are we not on names? We're not doing names? <laughs> Wait, was there... She, she would prefer you didn't. Was there a fried kitten? Did I, I heard fried, fried kitten, kitten. yeah. And did you say popcorn or popcorn? Popcorn. Okay. Cool. The refrigerator that she showed you earlier, it's actually been moved into the hall and she gives a presentation on its progress. 
She makes a few school-related announcements. There are some alumni who receive awards, and a couple of students demonstrate their magical theses quite impressively. When they finish, various members of the audience fire either red or green sparks into the air with their wands to show their <laughs> approval or disapproval. But finally, the high priestess stands and addresses the hall. Uh, students, friends, colleagues, uh, my old classmate and his adventuring party, uh, Snedrick Ferndangle, have traveled the long and dangerous road to our home in search of the locket of fabrication. Now, they need it for a very important reason. And I move as high priestess to let them have it. I give my personal word that they are to be trusted. What say ye? And you are pleased to see almost the entire room shoots green sparks and applauds on the high mistress's recommendation. Green sparks are good, y'all. Oh, oh <laughs> she breathes a sigh of release and says, well, now that that's settled, and she reaches into her robe when all of a sudden a gout of bright red flame shoots from the first row of bleachers, from a biche, who stands and says, Headmistress, while each and every one of us have faith in your eternal wisdom, some of us feel you might be biased in Snedrick's favor. And the high priestess grows very still and says, I'm sorry, a bitch. Did you just say I was biased? And a biche replies, Yes, after all, Snedrick was kicked out of the school for using illegal magic to help you out of a tricky situation. Are we really going to hand over one of the school's most valuable artifacts on nothing but your word? The high priestess, shaking now, raises her hammer and points it at Abish, saying, You mother, but before she can finish, Abish raises his hands and says, I call for the trials. And the room erupts into gasps and muttering as Holly's face falls into feet. I figured he was going to do that shit. She turns to you and says, uh, for our honored guests who might be unfamiliar, <laughs> it is the right of any member of high standing of this school to challenge any visitors asking a boon to the trials. An ancient test of your wits, your skill, and your strength that not even I can overrule. I'm afraid I cannot give you the locket, and while I can't stop you, I would beg you not to accept a bitch's challenge. You are my guests, and I'm sure whatever he has planned is far too dangerous. And then she turns to you and she says, I'm sorry, Snedrick. And with that, she sits back on her throne, and every eye in the school is on you. All right, I'm going to clear my throat dramatically. Can we, like, huddle up? <laughs> No, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna like throw you guys under the bus in this one, man. I gotta look good in front of my classmates. <laughs> Do it. Do I it. say, ladies and gentlemen and gnomes and dragonborn and Eric Coker or whatever the hell Claw is. <laughs> I want to, to be clear to all of you that though I am not a graduate of this fine establishment, I am an adventurer who goes on many adventures. And on my way here, I have battled hobgoblins. I have escaped the clutches of evil gnome traffickers. And by the way, when we broke out, I'm the one that killed the most guards, and I, I did it with my <laughs> lightning. I did a lot of lightning. I have snuck into an asshole, but not in a rapey way, in a, in a perfectly, it's a, it's a long story. And I fear nothing, especially nothing that this little a bitch can throw at me. I and my adventuring Buddies who are good friends with the Blade Vigil, by the way. I don't know if anybody had mentioned that, if that's worked its way around, but we're hanging out Ooh, with Blade, Blade Vigil, Vigil Blade and Vigil. we're not hanging around with you guys. Anyway, eh, me and my friends who have been personally sent on this quest by Blade Vigil are not afraid of whatever a bitch has to throw at us here. We accept his challenge. Isn't that right, fillers? And the moment you say that, whatever everyone else answers is lost because the room explodes into applause at your word. Damn right. People are cheering and shouting. We strike heroic poses, right? <laughs> I sure as hell do. Yeah. I throw my blue dwarven robes on in a heroic pose. <laughs> <laughs> everyone is cheering, except for Holly, who sadly <laughs> shakes her head before standing and says to the room, the challenge has been accepted. The first trial will take place tomorrow evening. Meeting adjourned. Now, as people file out past you and they're slapping your back and giving you thumbs up, she hurries over to you and says, are y'all insane? 
A beast is almost as powerful as I am, and he's going to try and kill you with those trials. Well, you know, he's almost as powerful as you are, Holly, and I think that's uh, I think that's about as much as we can handle. Can't you just fire a bitch so that they can't do that boat thing for the trial? I mean, he has to be in high standing, I reckon. I mean, we could lower his standing, but he's already pretty... Can't you just petition, really like, on behalf of four states to have a bitch removed from being able to do anything? <laughs> no, nah, that would get thrown out even if we got to appoint the council. Yeah, High Counselor Alito said that he thinks states should be allowed to tell other states which schools they should be in. Really? But he doesn't give them state. Yeah, it's a weird thing. Mm. Hmm. We hate him. Mm. He just died. Was he from the same state as you? <laughs> No, yes, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I was talking to God, not you. <laughs> oh, not you. Yeah. No. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm from upstate New York. <laughs> from. From. <laughs> Rod Serling is from my hometown. <laughs> Didn't Rod Serling rape a bunch of people? N did he? I don't. I'm just making it. I'm just playing. I'm playing on Eli. <laughs> Just He's totally dead. Doing... We can say that. Yeah. In this universe, he did. There's a famous wizard rapist named Rod Serling. <laughs> wow. Okay. Do not adjust your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. As you start to walk out of the hall, Holly pulls you aside, Snedrick, and says, Snedrick, Snedrick, are, are you going to go see your folks? I, I know how they are, but I think they'd love to see you. I mean, you know. Deep down, would you go see him before the trials? I'm not kidding. It it might be their last chance to see you, Snedrick. It's all right. Don't worry. I have plot armor. <laughs> and as Snedrick walks away, she uh she sort of turns to you, Bridget, and says, uh, Snedrick's parents are nice gnomes, really. They mean well, but they uh they've got some strange ideas. Will you watch out for them? Always, yeah, sure. Thank you for uh being so agreeable. I didn't expect this this whole thing to go as swimmingly as it did. I was <laughs> expecting, honestly, something was going to come up. Otherwise, an entire like leg of our our tour of of, of around the you know fantasy land with with no conflict. That would be crazy. I mean, it would be boring radio. I it know, would be really. Right? Be you should have your first plan. <laughs> uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, about this, uh, that island that I was on a while ago. Uh, oh, come on, girl. Let's spend some time there. And she, <laughs> she heads off. Bridget and Holly spend the evening rearranging furniture and talking to animal folk <laughs> in the illusory world. By the time you wake up the next morning, the entire castle is abuzz with the words of your trials. On your way to breakfast, gnomes accost you constantly with tips, hints, useful spells they think you'll need. Of course, nobody knows what trials a beach will pick, and so most of their advice is useless. You can hardly enjoy your breakfast of mystics and gravy before you set off across town <laughs> to Snedrick's childhood home. The Ferndangles live near the outskirts of town in a cute little house which, though on wheels, looks astonishingly normal. <laughs> compared to the other houses in town. There's a simple garden of herbs and veggies and a large sign at the gate that says, fakers keep out. <laughs> and that's because Snedrick's parents are part of a small but fervent percentage of the gnome population known as normies, spelled G-N-O-R-M-I-S, <laughs> that not only insist that they have no magic powers, they don't believe that anyone else does either. And Snedrick, <laughs> You haven't seen them since you left their home and went to school for magic against their wishes years ago. All right. So I'm going to turn to Dave and I'll be like, all right, man, I might need you to seduce my mom. I'll <laughs> wink twice if we have to go that route. Slap bet that twice. you can't do that. Okay. Slap bet. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to roll for not being able to be slapped. <laughs> Take a bonus action. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to knock on the door. So you knock on the door and an older blonde elf woman with bright eyes answers the door. And the second she catches sight of you, she says, well, my stars and Cardi Snedrick, is that you? Honey, honey, my baby is home. And she 
wraps her arms around you and just she's laughing and holding you and squealing in joy. She squeals so much that a gray bearded gnome comes running into the front room of the house and says, now, mother, what in tarnation is the matter? I'm working on the wagon and I hear the. And when he sees you, he stops and holds perfectly still. I quickly hug the dad. <laughs> uh, uh, bird. <laughs> Hello, hello there, B bird sir. Um, that's uh, that's that's his tradition. That's his way. <laughs> uh, I, I see that. Uh, it's 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 good to see you, Snedrick. How are you? What what brings you? Adventures. I've been adventuring a lot, doing a lot of adventures with big adventurers. You know, and fate of the universe and stuff like that. What have you been doing? You've been working on the wagon, huh? Yep, still repairing wagons. Why does everything have uh, wheels in this town? Well, you know, we never know when we as gnomes are going to have to pack up and move our area. A giant or, heck, even some hobgoblins cause a lot more trouble to us than it might to oh, a city full of... nomad. Nomad. That's right. They're, we're, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. All right. Never yep. mind. Never mind. <laughs> Understood. I mean, you know, hob most most gnomes can't kill hobgoblins. Some of us can, but you know, we're, <laughs> you, if you could, you'd be some kind of adventurer who goes on adventures instead of staying back here and working on wagons. Anywho, uh, I figured I'd <laughs> while we was in town adventuring, we would stop by and say hi. Uh, I w would introduce you to my adventuring party. Here. Yeah, and Snedrick's father has gotten very cold. Snedrick's mother is still very warm, but Snedrick's father has gotten very cold, and he says, yes, well, I can see you haven't changed much. These are your uh, faker adventure friends, I assume. I'm going to yeah. invoke mage hand, like I'm going to mm -hmm. do my mage hand thing, and do the jerk-off motion <laughs> mm -hmm. to, to, um, to Dave. So, you know, just to kind of... He wants you to jerk Are you down. trying to signal me to fuck your mom? <laughs> no, no, I, that was a wink, God damn it. That was a wink. No, I'm that's my way of of going, oh come on, Dad. That's my you know, because it's magical. And he's saying, Oh, magic here exist. we go again. I'm not having this fight. Son, you know that that is a naturally occurring fog that happens when a gnome gets mad enough. All well, right. Even uh, if, if you... it was, that would be magic. Dad, look, all right, this is a pig with a hat on. And I'm gonna reach out and cast minor illusion and grab a pig with a hat on. And look, he has wings. That don't make no <laughs> damn sense at all if there ain't no magic. I don't know how you found a pig with wings and a hat or how you snuck him into the house when I wasn't paying I attention. It's, it's, <laughs> it is just useless with y'all. <sighs> Good evening, Mr. Pig. And then he tries to shake the pig's hand. <laughs> and it's very clearly illusion magic. And he waves his hand through it a couple of times. And he goes, I see that your pig friend is translucent. Yeah, he's a translucent flying pig in a hat, Dad. Damn yep. it. Uh, yeah, Four ain't out nothing five changed pigs. around here. Yeah. Ain't nothing changed around there, neither. Dear, if you need me, I'll be fixing the wagon. And he sort of storms coldly out of the room. Oh, I'm going to cast Thalmaturgy and slam the door shut in his face. <laughs> and I'm going to make a bunch of extra fucking pigs in hats fly around him as he walks out. <laughs> He, he as he as he walks by, he turns back and he goes, "This is all perfectly natural phenomena, all very explainable." Thalmaturgy again, and the sound of distant thunder. There's a wind. That's thunder. <laughs> Thunder's normal. It's supposed to thunder today. And then Ominous he slams whispers this time. Sorry. Yeah, Ominous, the, that's me. I'm whispering. <laughs> Hello, it's me, Snedrick's dad. And he slams the door behind him and goes back to his workshop. Oh God! I guess I should have warned y'all. I'm so uh, sorry. I'm sorry about him, your mom says. So, we heard about the trials. Are you actually going to go up against a beast in the trials? Yeah, I mean, I would think, you know, as my mother, you'd be like, boy, that poor a bitch, huh? Uh, but but maybe... Well, but, you know, it, I I certainly hope they go well for you. If I if I could convince your dad, we'll, um, we'll come and we'll, we'll cheer you on. Whole school's going to be there. Whole town is, too. I That's suppose right. it takes the, if you don't think it's real, I suppose it does take the the life or death out of it. Well, you know, 
I, I was never really a big Norman. Uh, that's that's more Snedrick's dad. I just, uh, well, I don't know. I guess some magic seems like it might be real. Some magic seems like it's not. I just, I prefer not to start a fight. Are you vaccinated? Well, you know, here's the thing. They put all kinds of crazy shit in those vaccines sure. that you don't know. No, no. Sure. You knew what you were getting into when you asked for that, man. <laughs> You should have showed him the ass wolves. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Wait, he doesn't. Your dad isn't one of those crazies who won't let people cure them, is he? Like, Oh, yeah. No, he he's that be, way, too. Yeah. Really? Not even spare the dying? No, nope. not even spare the dying. I was going to write a, a whole uh, uh, book about it, but then... Uh, <laughs> about the time he got burned up and wouldn't even let us take him to the damn magic schools right down the damn road but you know yeah. well um you, you probably best be getting on your way i'm sure you've got friends at the school you want to see and and i should go talk to your father it, it, it's good to see you snedrick I, I i'll try and make it to your trials honey all right well it'd be great to see you good to see you again ma and and then i'm gonna cast mage hand to wave at my dad in the other room too. <laughs> that's, that's just you got a third hand he grew a third hand because of the <laughs> the radioactive Mm -hmm. yeah, radioactive. We can't yep. hear you from the other room. I don't know what radioactive means. Third hand. <laughs> so back in school, <laughs> everyone is once again gathered in the Great Hall. The center of the hall is now bare, except for the archway Holly showed you on your tour. The summoning bell stops just as it did the first night you were here, and Holly says, As is ancient custom, High Prefect a bitch, yeah. and he mutters a bitch, has prepared a gamut of trials for our guests, known only to him and only to be revealed when the challengers step through the gate and begin their ordeal. Also, by ancient custom, nobody is allowed to aid or interfere with the trial in any way under penalty of banishment from Athiana. Challengers, do you have anything to say before we begin? I mean, it's unrelated. I just, it was so funny that I did get banished for you once. Just one of the, th so weird. So weird how that <laughs> things come back around. Uh, no, I have nothing to say except for <laughs> I'm in a brave adventure and I'm not worried about these trials at all. All right, then. With that in mind, uh, step through the gate when you're ready to begin your first trial. Good luck, Snedrick. Can we have a pee break before we go in that, through that gate? Oh, that's it. This is it. Oh, You're going to walk through and this oh, is right. it. All yeah. right. Let's go through the gate. All right. You guys want to pee anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Here in the room where everyone watches. <laughs> <laughs> what if we pee into the gate? I kind of want to see what happens if we pee into the gate. <laughs> I'm peeing into the gate. <laughs> I slap Dave. <laughs> I'm peeing. Stop. Stop. Get off me. I'm peeing. Bridget slaps Dave as he's peeing. And the trials have begun. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.